Uh, this walk will take us from Stirling Castle to the Wallace Monument, which you can see way over there. Uh, I like to refer to it as the, the, the Warrior Walk because it takes in the site of a few battles, uh, mentions a few kings. Uh, for example, we get to hear about how King Richard, uh, King Richard uh, the Third, I think, is buried in the back garden, probably in Stirling. And uh, we also visit the, the tomb of one of Scotland's kings. So there's lots to see. Uh, we'll end up uh, creeping through woodland, just um, at Abbey Craig over there. Uh, but we'll end at the Wallace Monument, and there's some pretty magnificent c uh, scenery looking over towards uh, here, in fact, um, towards Stirling and the, the flat cars in which it sits. So it's a lovely day, let's be off. here. Depending on what time of day you, you start this walk, at the foot of Broad Street uh, is a Darnley Coffee House and if it's open I highly recommend that you go in for some soup. It's a little known fact but it is thought that one of Scotland's kings was actually born here. We're continuing down Baker Street here. So we're turning left down Friar Street here. And the name Friar Street's a pretty good indicator of um, what I'm going to talk about very shortly. And that is the burial place of King Richard III. Just going down Maxwell Place here. Okay, so we've come down Maxwell Place or Maxwell Street or whatever it was called. I've already forgotten that. Short term memory loss. Uh oh. Anyway, we're following. There's a blue sign there. It says it's an arrow pointing towards Cambus Kenneth, and that is the way we're going. And uh, you may be able to see a wee thing way in the distance, which is the Wallace Monument, which is ultimately where we're going. But we'll go straight ahead down here towards Stirling's old docks. Try to get away from all these very noisy vehicles. I, I was going to do a bit of talking at the old uh, docks here, but I can see that it's closed. <laughs> or fenced off, rather. Clearly, in fact, like, on major kind of uh, the rivers, part of the, the shore's caved in, so that's a good reason to close it. What I was trying to say back there, let me just turn this round. What I was trying to say back there, above the noise of all the vehicles, I'm trying to say the word vehicles in as annoying a manner as I possibly can, just to demonstrate how much I hate cars. But anyway, um, I made a, a major boo-boo back there. Um, it's Richard II that I believe is probably buried in, in Stirling, not Richard III, as I had said. Um, that's the forgetfulness thing creeping in again. My name will go soon, I'm sure. But, um... History has Richard, King Richard II dying at Pontefract Castle in 1400, or thereabouts. 
But there is a good argument to suggest that he actually somehow escaped and managed to make his way. <laughs> make his way to Stirling. And Ferry lived an extra 19 years and uh, he died in 1419. He was then buried in what at that time was the Blackfriars Monastery, which is no longer here. But apparently, I mean, there was even a, a stone, uh, you know, saying, Here lies King Richard II. And it was placed beside the high altar in the Church of Blackfriars Monastery. And it's a, it's a whole complicated story, I'm not going to go into it, but I believe he is actually buried here. And um, the exact location is behind 64 Murray Place. So there. <laughs> anyway, let, let's carry on. Uh, Towards the bridge that goes over the River Forth and into Cambus Kenneth. And just down at the, the foot of that, that road we came down past the remains of the, the old docks there, you'll see this footbridge which uh, leads into Cambus Kenneth and a wee bit of peace and quiet with any luck. So just straight on and up the top of this road and turn right towards the Abbey. Just approaching the Abbey now. Now Cambus Kenneth Abbey, like probably most abbeys in Scotland, has played a crucial role in the country's development. I mean, folk like Robert the Bruce have been here, I think, having a wee chat with other folk. And uh, I think the Scottish Parliament may have met or convened here for a short period of time. Oops, cattle grid. the bell tower there. Let's go in. Okay, so let's have a bit of hush. This is, um, this is the tomb here. In fact, let me just come around here. It says, so the restoration of the tomb of her ancestors was executed by command of Her Majesty Queen Victoria in 1865. So it's quite a... quite a recent looking, it doesn't look old, you know. And there is some information about it all there. King James III Buried after the Battle of Sochiburn, 1488. I think he actually, and again I could be wrong, but I think he fell, did he fall from his horse? I think he fell from his horse and had been taken to a house to recover. And somebody disguised as a priest killed him. <laughs> Which isn't really very funny, I don't know why I'm laughing. Um, yeah, one of many of Scotland's dastardly deeds. It's not quite the tomb, I have seen it before, but it's not quite the tomb I would have um, hoped for. I think the word tomb, for me, conjures up kind of Tutankhamun type images, where you, you kind of half hope there might be a a place to go into and furtively crawl around amidst bones and skulls and swords and uh, scepters and crowns and gems of every sort imaginable. 
but perhaps I've just been reading too much of Lord of the Rings or something like that. But nevertheless, that is the tomb of one of our kings. King James III of Scotland. Just straight on, and you'll see the Wallace Monument straight ahead, which is the way we're going. And it's probably only as you leave the last of Cambus Kenneth's houses behind and find yourself in a narrow road between fields that the whole kind of the whole beauty of this place just suddenly hits you because you have the the Wallace Monument straight ahead which as we get closer will slowly duke down behind the Abbey Craig Rocks getting shorter and shorter with every step but to the right which I'm sure you'll be able to see you've got the Hill of Demayat and uh, the rest of the Ockel Hills and not many cars. What could be better? Now, Campus Kenneth, the name Campus Kenneth apparently means Field of Kenneth, and it refers to Kenneth MacAlpin, King of the Scots. And apparently, in this area, all around us, in AD 843, if my memory serves me well, there was a huge battle between the Scots and the Picts. Um, it was a battle that was crucial in the formation of the Scotland that we know today. The, the Pictish army was absolutely decimated. Um, if you look at Canvas Kenneth on a map, you'll see that it sits in a rather pronounced loop of the River Forth and I can well imagine if things were getting a bit tough for the Pictish army they might, there would be no retreat because they would effectively have become trapped in that loop of the River Forth and um, either had to fight I tried to go over the river and I'm sure many would have perished in the river. Um, but as I say, it was a battle that eventually led to the amalgamation of the Picts and the Scots to form the Scotland that we know. I mean, it, wasn't, it didn't just happen overnight. In fact, I think there was some uh, intermarrying in royal lines between the Picts and the Scots. And, Eventually, we got Kenneth MacAlpin as the first true King of Scotland, whose genes, I believe, are probably in today's royal family. Um, but it's funny how, um, you know, it, it, it's funny how natural features can play such a crucial role in a battle situation. I mean, it's not really funny, in fact, I'm sure those who are concerned with battles and things will know that is exactly the case. And here, um, the river plays such a crucial role. Where are all these cars coming from? Um, in the same way that the river played a crucial role in the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297. Um, yeah, so let's carry on and we'll, we'll, we'll come to a major road soon and I'll show you the way, there's a couple of stone steps that indicate the, the entrance into the, the forest and the Abbey Craig, and I'll see you there. Ignore uh, a road that headed off on the right there, you just follow this road as it bends and twists and uh, you come to a level crossing, you cross over the railway 
And just after this level crossing, we will hit a, a main road, very busy road, so be careful. And there we'll turn right. Now, at some point, what we're going to be looking out for is just a little, I think it's just two very worn stone steps that will lead into woodland. So, that's what we're looking out for. About 400 or so metres along that road. You'll pass an old school on the left, and then a bend, and uh, those couple of steps that I showed you there uh, are sort of right there. And if you go in there, and you'll see this uh, path in woodland, which almost instantly starts to go uphill. Okay, so pay attention here. We've come up the top of that slope there and all of a sudden you're presented with more woodland and maybe a choice of paths. So we're going to turn left here. You can see that the path that they're on just now sort of joins with a, another one and as I say it's, it's left, we turn left. This is the sort of exciting bit of this whole walk. Uh, not that what, you know, not, not that what's happened before wasn't exciting. I'm, I'm sure you're all just in a lather of anticipation of what could possibly come next. That's more exciting than what's gone before. But, um, oh, stinging hells. Right, um, yeah, so, but this is where we get the good views. And I think that's probably the exciting the, the, what's exciting about it. Now, uh, we're going to stop here for a breather. You see this? I believe this to be a yew tree. Whew. It's a good place to stop for a moment to catch our breath. Trees like this were used to make bows in the medieval period. Uh, so let's pause for a moment. and dwell in the past. Right, I think that's enough dwelling. On the night before the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297, if I haven't got my dates mixed up yet again, um, the whole Scottish army was camped in and around these woods. This is Abbey Craig. Of course the Wallace monu Monument wouldn't have been here then, because it's a Victorian feature. And built really to commemorate Wallace's victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. But in the morning of that battle, William Wallace and Andrew Murray would without doubt have taken themselves to a high point on this crag so that they could get, get a good look across the cars towards Stirling just to see what the English army were up to. And we're going to go there now. I can't say with any certainty that they would have done that, but certainly from a tactics point of view it would have made more than just a little bit of sense. And uh, if such a thing happened, I don't even know exactly where it would have been. But I'm going to show you where I think it is. And it's about now that you, you start to get sneaky glimpses through the trees and 
you then start to realise how close you are, or, or maybe you don't realise how close you are, but I'll tell you right now that I do not go onto that grass area. You must stay in the path. There's a sheer drop there, but you start to get views back, indeed, back towards Camus Kenneth, which is where we've come from. And you can see we've come up a wee bit. And even if you didn't know that, all my pecker and panting would have told you that. Oh, there's a tree blocking the path here. Oh my God. Pubs shut. Docks shut. Trees in the way. I mean, how long has that been there? I'm always frightened when I go under these things that at that exact moment will be when the tree will decide, oh, it's, I've had enough. I'm just going to fire down completely. Right, okay. Now, just there, the, the path, this path uh, starts to veer away from the, uh, the crag. Don't be tempted to follow that slightly narrower track that kind of continues to follow the crag. We're veering it away from the crag on this wide track. I don't know if it's still the case, but I remember a, a, a good few years ago that there was a, they had archery went on somewhere in these woods. So if you hear a thud and a yelp and the camera suddenly drops to the ground, you'll know we've inadvertently wandered into that very spot. Um, you can see here at the division, at this point, we are kind of going to the left, going up some very uh, covered over and barely visible stone steps. Concrete steps, they're not that old. And again, we're going to the left here. You see that? There was other people there. I am not alone in this forest. Now, it's not far from here that we'll suddenly really see what this walk is all about. Brace yourself. Stirling Castle. And perhaps Wallace and Murray stood here in the morning of the Battle of Stirling Bridge and saw the English army and at that moment decided just to let half of them over that wee bridge and then to destroy the bridge and when that happened all hell broke loose panic amongst the English knights the English soldiers getting slaughtered and again like at the, the battle in and around Cambus Kenneth in AD 843, the River Forth played a crucial role in that battle. In destroying the bridge over the river, there was no escape for those that had crossed it. And the English army, or at least half of the English army, were slaughtered. And those that didn't make it over the river perhaps decided quite wisely to flee for no other reason that they couldn't get over the river to have a go at the Scots and it was a great victory for the Scottish army under William Wallace and Andrew Murray great victory so if you just carry on and follow this fence here
And as you approach the monument, you, you know, there's, there's further viewpoints and it's very hard not to just have a look because it's just absolutely stunning. Utterly stunning. A wee bit of a blue misty haze today, but you can see for a good distance. But we're almost out of the monument and uh, the walk's nearly over. Oh yeah. Brambles. Right. A few steps here just to confirm that this is the way that we're going. There are times when um, the owners of the Wallace Monument have uh, live actors. It won't be all the time, but occasionally you might emerge from the trees and be confronted with a, a William Wallace <laughs> and his huge sword. So that's always a bit of a bonus. And you can see that we're about to join a tarmac road, which is, uh, I think, a wee bus comes up and down that. To give folk who don't have the lung power a wee lift. But uh, we are approaching the monument. The thing about approaching it at this time of year is that. Uh, with the, the leaf cover on the trees it's not quite as dramatic I mean if you were to emerge from the trees there in winter when all the leaves and the trees are bare it's a much more uh, dramatic first uh, first look but um, this is going to be too big to fit in my in my shot here <laughs> um, it is could they not have made the wall small monument shorter so as it fitted better in your shot I mean, for goodness sake. Anyway, that, we, we have made it. Mollus Monument. Highly recommend that you um, you go inside. Uh, because you can go up to the very top and the views are obviously even more stunning. Um, and there's a wee story that I'll tell you in connection with... Um, it's, it connects with William Wallace's underwear. Not many people know that here, in addition to his sword, they have his underpants. So if you, when you buy the ticket at the desk, if you look at the person behind the desk, wink, and then say, Wallace's undies, let's have a wee look. Then, you know, they'll produce them from beneath, they're kept beneath the desk. Would I kid you on such a serious matter? Well, that's us uh, finished the walk. Um, I sometimes put aside maybe two hours for it, but it's generally got less than that, depending on how fast you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Eddie Burns. I also hope you enjoyed the music that goes with this video. It's uh, from my single called We Fight for Freedom, which is available on all digital music platforms. So get out there and download it. <laughs> That's the advert. I'll see you again.
Yeah, yeah, yeah.